Bit of reception at Ratana and the government uh, promising a big show of strength at Waitangi this year. A spotlight is coming on what concrete proposals this new government has to improve the lot of Māori. I'm joined now in the Auckland studio by the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Good morning to you. Morena. Uh, before we do get to those issues, I just wanted to uh, raise with you the, the death of this New Zealander, mm. Hashim uh, Sleimankal, who has been tragically killed mm. in this attack in Africa. Afghanistan. I understand that um, some of your MPs, at least, have been in touch mm. with the with the family. What what can you tell us? Yeah, I, I've certainly, uh, from those who um, who are close to the refugee community, heard uh, what a significant role he played, um, and how he was considered a, a real um, s- s- pillar. Uh, of the community, Mount Roskill as well, um, and it is a terrible, tragic loss. And so my condolences to the family. Uh, I know um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have, have reached out, but ultimately um, we're here for whatever the family may need, and in the interim, uh, I just share my condolences. So MFAT does offer consular services Indeed. To, to the family in Indeed, these Indeed, and it's up to individual circumstances what they, their needs may be, but um, at this stage, of course, their minds will be... Uh, turn to grief, um, but if there's anything practical we can do, we will do it. Indeed. Thank you for that. Let's move to domestic issues, and as we uh, highlighted in, in that intro, you've got uh, Waitangi coming up, mm. and you, you've talked about spending some considerable time uh, there this year. And there's talk about a new relationship with Māori from this government. I'm just wondering what concrete plans you do have. When we saw Helen Clark come in, that government, they had their closing the gaps policy yeah. where they tried to actually focus specifically and target and spend money directly. Uh, is that going to be your approach or are you looking more at a, at a general, you know, rising tide lifts all boats sort of approach? I think probably a, a combination, really. I mean, when you look at some of the areas where we have significant overrepresentation of Māori, uh, they include, you know, high unemployment um, figures. Uh, they include incarceration rates, child poverty figures, and any time um, myself and and our Māori um, ministers, of which uh, we have eight collectively in the government, have sat down uh, with be it iwi leaders uh, or iwi, it, it, the messages. You know, we need help. We can't do this alone. And that's the kind of partnership we want to forge. If we're going to tackle some of those more entrenched issues, we do need to start doing it together. Uh, And I'd say housing is also an area where we're looking for a partnership uh, to see what we can what we can deliver to tackle those really entrenched issues. Okay, so that's the you know, I mean, that that are nice words and partnership is all good. But when you get to actually, you know, the rubber hitting the road, what are the specific um, policies yep. and also the specific targets. I mean, are you looking at Māori incarceration rates, for example, and saying we've got a target to lower it to X? Or yeah. Are yeah. you actually going that far? It's setting, you know, setting targets, of course, sets out your priorities and then you've got to have the policies and, and the programme to underpin it. So we want to improve home ownership rates. I think for uh, Māori, they are down to around roughly levels of 27%. So uh, we know that there are different iwi, tainu we've expressed an interest, Naitahu are already investing um, as well uh, in uh, in investing in affordable housing. Um, we've uh, had the minister already meet with the Tamaki Collective. There are opportunities there for us to work together to combine the power of the state in a large scale building program with Ewe yeah, so to deliver you, more money. Have you homes. got Have you got a target? You're saying it's, tw- it's a shocking figure. Tw- Anything 27 is better than 27 percent. Home so home ownership have, among Maori. Have, have you got a target about what it should be to lift it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Look, the minister may well be working on that space, but there is no doubt that that is an unacceptable rate. Um, The same incarceration, we've said generally uh, we want to reduce our incarceration rate by 30%. We know that will impact Māori because of the 10,500 prisons we have, more than 50% are Māori. And that, that says to us we need to look at... What's what? How we're failing in our system if we can have such a disproportionate number like that? Uh, now, look, the last government actually you know, had an accord, as I understand, with Kingitanga. Look, we've got a large number of prisons in your um, in your area. 
Uh, what can we do to work together? I know our Minister of Corrections wants to broaden out that work uh, because we can't keep doing things in the same way and expect a different result. Mm. I want to move to water rights because <clears throat> it is going to be an issue at Waitangi. There's been some signal on that. Yeah. Your, your policy in the election was that Labour would use a share of uh, this fresh water royalty to allocate to Māori mm. to uh, use that to try to resolve uh, some of the rights and interests in fresh water. Is that off the table now? Well, that policy has has obviously gone. Uh, when we went into coalition negotiations, entirely separate to the issue of uh, water allocation was just simply the issue of a royalty. Uh, and that was something that um, New Zealand First didn't want to pursue generally. They were interested only in bottlers. OK, so what So so what happens to the bottled water tax? Is yeah. that still a goer or We're not? still waiting for advice on how to apply that specifically to exporters. About whether you can. Or just how to how to do okay. it. There are different mechanisms. So you will do it. It's just how. That's that's what we're working okay. on right do, now. Do Māori get a share of that? Then that's the the conversation we have to have around water allocation generally. We're not coming to a brand new conversation, gone for a you know for a number of years now. Iwi leaders in particular have been engaging with the past government on how to deal with y- issues around yeah, water but rights. But what's new here though is that for twenty five years the policy has been no one owns water. Now and the policy still is no one owns water. Everybody owns water. Everyone has a stake in water. We've acknowledged Iwi's interest uh, are greater than others, are, 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 as are those who often have access and rights to access water. Māori in- interests are greater than others. How so? Yeah, well, we're acknowledging their their role as Indigenous New Zealanders and, and, uh, and of course, the principles of the treaty. But we're also but acknowledging that, that mean, those... What does that mean, though? What does that we're mean? We're also acknowledging what, those... Just if I can finish, because the principle we've always argued is collective ownership. Everyone has an interest. Māori interest uh, is greater than others, as are those who hold access rights to water. Their interest is often greater than others as well. And we've tried to balance that, but we're looking at a very specific part around exporters because New Zealanders as a whole took issue with the idea of pristing aquifers being bottled, sent offshore, and there being no compensation so, to New Zealand. So Māori may get a share of that. Again, we've got we haven't even got the policy around uh, the foreign bottlers in place. Then that's a secondary conversation. Um, but like I say, this water allocation generally is not new. We're coming into a conversation that's been had for a while and that we need to keep having. Okay, so maybe get a. Sh- I'm just not clear about whether is it off the table that Māori get a share of the bottled water tax, or is we it haven't on the even table? put it in yet. And my my the point so I'm making know, is know. that we, okay. once once that's in place, that's the conversation right. that's had, but it's not there more yet. More broadly, and I go back to David Parker, August 14, quoted in the New Zealand Herald. He was talking, and he said the same thing on this program. Mm. He's talking about the possibility of a water settlement to iwi, similar to the 1990s policy on fisheries. And he said, uh, quote, if you wanted to do it iwi by iwi, it's actually reasonably easy to do because all the water takes are metered these days. And so you just have to establish the rohi and work out the uh, what the royalty is coming from that area. Or you could do it on a more holistic basis. Is that still the policy that you are looking at some sort of monetary settlement for iwi for again, water rights? Again, all of that hung off an old policy that's no longer on the table. That was the general uh, levy applying to uh, large-scale water use outside of metered water use at council level. And so, so we're that's looking... off the table now? Uh, well, we're no longer living in that way, but so there's st- no longer that general collection. Look, the, but you what, could I'm, still, what I'm you acknowledging... Could fund it. You could still fund it from the general um, coffers, though. But the point the was... The principle hasn't changed. You just haven't got that. The point was, though, if you're directly generating an, a, 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 a levy, a fund, directly off water to use where there is an interest. It opens that up. It opens that up. Okay, fair enough. So how is it then, can you give us any sense of your thinking about how you are going to resolve Māori rights and interests in fresh water. That would, I'd say, Guy, that'd be really premature of me to do that. I've been in the job for just over 90 days. Yes, I've had the chance to have uh, an initial conversation with iwi leaders. I've travelled to Ratana. Uh, I anticipate meeting with Kingi Tanga. I've done that very informally at Ratana first. Um, but 
part of what we've um, said outright that we will do is form strong relationships and partnerships. I'm not going to come in 90 days without having had some of those conversations, which, as I say, have already started and preempt that. I need to be a, I need to sit around the table. Yeah. Would you be happy for it to go to the Supreme Court, as the EWI Chairs Forum has suggested it may do if they don't get action on this? Or would I, you like to see it uh, resolved before Of course, that? everyone wants to try and find consensus. But again, I'm not going to preempt any of those conversations at this early stage. Date. All right. You say 90-odd days in. When's the 100 days up? 3rd of February. Oh, you got that off there. So how, how far are we in now? 90? 90, what are we, 6? <laughs> I've got, uh, we've got, I know, I've got two agenda items left. I've got the um, inquiry into abuse and state care uh, and also the child poverty legislation. All right. And now on less um, heavy matters, Auckland anniversary today, what are you up to? Uh, I'm going to pop down very briefly to Laneway to and Laneway. then head to Wellington for, for a bit Not of work in Parliament. Not going to see the regatta on the waterfront there? No, no, no. Oh. I have seen it before. It's a it's a real sight. But uh, and the um, tugboats doing their burnouts on the water. No, I missed that this time. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time. That is the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who is in our Auckland studio this morning. It's twenty five to eight. And coming up before eight on morning reports, a serious shortage of teachers forces schools to scrape the bottom of the barrel and hire people they'd not normally consider. Also, temperatures expected to soar again today. We'll have advice on how to cope with the heat. And New Zealand's new permanent residents are now less skilled than they were five years ago. We'll be asking why. The headlines first with Nicola.